the listeners face when they have to listen to the other language. Chang 2007 found that many found listening difficult because of the nature of the spoken text. So besides the speed that the listeners cannot control, they cannot go back to listen to the text again. And spoken text vary to a great extent from speaker to speaker among other problems. So um, using Anderson's 1995 cognitive framework of language comprehension, that divides comprehension into three phases, perception, parsing, and utilization. Go 2000 studying Chinese EFL students of different English language proficiencies and found that these participants experienced 10 listening problems. And before I introduce you to the five most common problems, um, perception problems refer to those problems like the sound script matching. Parsing problems refer to problems such as segmenting like streams of sounds into like mental units that make sense to the listener. And so utilization is trying to um, understand the intended message of the speaker. So these are the top five most common problems reported by GOATS participants. They quickly forgot what they heard. They did not recognize words they knew. They understood words, but not the intended message. They neglected the next part when thinking about meaning, and they were unable to form a mental representation of words heard. As you can see that most of these problems fall within the perception and the parsing stage. Go also found that lower proficiency learners face more perception problems, and that should come as a no surprise. However, higher proficiency learners also face perception problems, as well as problems in the other more advanced stages. And um, to recap again, GOAT's participants uh, were the Chinese EFL learners. And also Renania and Farrell found that five most common listening problems faced by Chinese EFL learners in college were also mostly perception problems with only one person problem. So now let's move on a little bit uh, onward to the comprehension-based approach to teaching in general and the optimal input hypothesis. So the comprehension-based approach among other approaches, this approach suggests that similar to L1, Second language learners normally takes a large amount of time to comprehend great amount of spoken input before they begin or they should be encouraged to speak. Delayed output in this approach is encouraged for many reasons. Uh, okay, so you see that input it's paid a lot of attention to as it leads to language uh, acquisition. However, some researchers do not really quite agree with this approach because they think that output is also an accessory or some think that output is even more necessary to language acquisition. However, these researchers do not deny the importance of extensive quality input in terms of language acquisition. This highlights the fact that listening, or one of the two ways that we receive input, deserves attention in our two language classrooms the same way that the other three skills do. Some reasons that this approach to teaching L2 should be adopted more include this is an alternative to the approach that focuses more on developing oral skills. It's quite illogical and unnatural to expect learners to produce quality output if their listening ability hasn't been improved first. And this approach is also in line with Krashen's input hypothesis and its recently updated version of such hypothesis or the optimal input hypothesis that still posits that comprehensible input leads to language acquisition. However, Okay, the optimal input hypothesis uh, by Krashen and Mason 2020 uh, posits that not every comprehensible input is of equal value. 
that optimal input needs to satisfy these four requirements. First, it has to be comprehensible for the most part. Second, it needs to be compelling or fun or engaging. Third, it needs to be rich in context. And uh, last but not least, it needs to be abundant. So now, let's move on a little bit further to the two approaches at teaching listening in language classrooms. For the first approach, we have the explicit approach to teaching listening. In this approach, it focuses more, like, or I'm not sure solely, on teaching listening strategies. And this type of teaching, it's normally manifested in the form of pre, while, and post listening activities uh, in English language course books. The other approach to teaching listening, it's called the implicit approach to teaching listening. In this approach, uh, people believe that exposure to extensive amount of comprehensible input will lead to language acquisition or the use of extensive listening. In this work, I adopt the definition of extensive listening given by Renanya and Farrell 2011, that extensive listening is all types of listening activities that allow learners to receive a lot of comprehensible and enjoyable listening input for an extended period of time. The keys are they are provided with comprehensible, enjoyable, and for an extended period of time. Why we should adopt the implicit approach to teaching listening. Uh, before we touch upon that, let's look at this first. Both explicit and implicit approach to teaching listening have seen evidence supporting their validity in improving learners' listening ability in L2. So, in other words, both approaches work. However, the explicit approach to teaching listening or uh, teaching listening strategies is also criticized for not having enough evidence on its efficiency to improve learners' listening ability. Uh, along the same line, the implicit approach also lacks supporting research findings, but it is mainly because it's still in its infancy stage, in my opinion. So why should we let learners do more extensive listening in class? I would like to propose five reasons for implementing extensive listening in language classrooms. The first reason is that there is no conclusive evidence confirming the benefits of listening strategy teaching in EFL classrooms. The second reason is that there are actually studies having found little or no benefit of teaching listening strategies to L2 learners. Among these studies, we have Chang and Miller 2014 found that learners in the extensive listening group outperformed learners in the listening strategy group. And we have also Milliner and Dimoski 2021 found that lower proficiency if our learners listening performance did not improve after having received a listening strategy treatment. Uh -oh. And the reason is my own experience as an EFL learner. Um, in the past, uh, when I learned English language, especially the listening skill, I always felt listening strategies were a little bit unnatural to me. Uh, I always wondered why I had to learn listening strategies when I did not even need any for my L1 time. And though I found new vocabulary items introduced in the pre-listening activities to be somewhat helpful when, I mean, when you have to listen to uh, like a short video clip next, I often questioned other listening activities. This is especially the case when I had to predict what would happen next in the story. And I do not think I ever used these strategies, at least not consciously, when I listened to English speeches. However, I was also exposed to English, sorry, authentic English language spoken by native speakers once a week since I was young. So um, that's another like uh, truth about myself. The fourth reason is that extensive listening, as I mentioned earlier, should be implemented more because it is simply more fun. The idea of using extensive amount of meaningful, fun, authentic, and comprehensible input, it, not input, I'm sorry, input sounds like an enjoyable way to learn the new language. 
So when learners are immersed in this extensive, comprehensible, and enjoyable input, language acquisition should take place more easily. This is in accordance with Krashen's monitor model and, op and optimal input hypothesis, which with some adjustments, Lickman and Van Patten 2021 confirmed, having been right for the past 40 years. And the fifth reason is that learners will simply do what they enjoy again and again. Imagine if their learning experience in class is enjoyable and proved fruitful. They will definitely do this more in their free time. If extensive listening is implemented in class, learners will be made aware that when they watch something for fun, when they listen something for fun, for example, listen to fun podcasts or watch interesting movies, because you know, at the same time, they also listen to the English language spoken text, they will be made aware that their L2 can be improved simply by being exposed to fun and comprehensible L2 input. This is important as they will know that they can improve their L2 outside the classroom by themselves and on their own. Their self-confidence, motivation, self-esteem, and autonomy, I believe, in L2 will definitely increase. Um, uh, in this presentation, I propose one of the extensive listening activities to be used in the classroom, and that is the use of audio visuals with accompanying text uh, for using for listening skill development. Why? Because it is easier to understand how to spoken text if there is some kind of comprehension aiding supplement. And as you can see, when you watch something on TV, like um, English language series, sitcoms or movies, they come with visual cues. You see the body language of the characters. And many times you are also provided with L2 captions or L1 subtitles. These are widely available because we have so many streaming platforms nowadays, such as Netflix, Apple TV, or even YouTube. Reading the accompanying text does not prevent learners from listening to the spoken text. The third reason is that multiple watches is also possible. And many learners actually reported that they watch the same movies again and again. So if they can have multiple watches with a sequence of subtitles for the first watch, captions for the second watch, L2 captions for the second watch, in other words, English captions for the second watch, and also none of the text, none of the written text for the final watch. It has been proved to be one very effective sequence for incidental vocabulary learning. And if we focus on the use of L2 captions, captions can help learners process information in the perception phase, as we talked about earlier, and also in the parsing and utilization phase more efficiently. Captions are also beneficial for both L1 and L2 acquisition. Captions can help further enhance learners' performance on productive skills, and also the benefits of simultaneous listening and reading in the same language has been widely witnessed. Don't worry if you cannot hear the sounds, but uh, let me play this for a couple of seconds. Sorry. So if you could possibly hear the sounds, which I don't think you could, uh, you would have heard that they spoke very, very fast. Even to me, like a 25 year EFL learner of English still found that they speak very, very fast in this Gilmore Girls uh, season one, which I really liked. So if captions in English were not turned on, these words like she has passed up to good prospects would have passed me by and I would have lost the chance of learning new aspects of language because I did not know what prospects meant before, for example. So the feasibility and benefits of using audio visuals with accompanying text in language classrooms. Um, the first thing is that it's practice. Uh, 
it's practical and uh, that's uh, one thing that we got from this COVID pandemic is that everyone was online most of the time. So there are many legal streaming sites available with uh, good L1 subtitles and second language or L2 English captions. So if the teacher considers the overall ability of L2 of their students in their class, they can definitely choose the materials, the audio visuals refer to like movies, series, sitcoms, in these platforms or in YouTube. They can definitely, sorry, definitely find the suitable resources to be used in language classrooms. The second thing is that uh, students willing out to learning with joy. Watching movies and series is fun. I think nearly everyone will agree with me on that. So when watching these in the L2 that students can actually understand, this will lower their effective filter and help them relate listening to the target language with joyous feelings. So language acquisition according to Krashen and Mason 2020 should take place more easily. Students will likely continue this activity on their own. And when students internalize the concept that listening to fun materials also leads to improved target language performance, they are likely to expose themselves to more and more target language input outside classroom on their own. And this should promote their learner's autonomy. And the resources are also available for students choosing because nowadays I think most of the students have access to one of these plat platforms. Last but not least, this is what learners want and what they believe can improve their listening skills. I actually conducted a small scale survey last semester as part of my research course and the findings revealed that if we talk about in-class listening teaching, most participants or 95% preferred both explicit and implicit listening teaching uh, things. In other words, they prefer to learn both listening strategies as well as to do um, listening for fun thing or extensive listening. However, the majority of them or 68.2% preferred doing more extensive listening than practicing listening strategies. Not surprisingly, 25% preferred practicing more listening strategies than doing extensive listening. Very surprisingly, 45, no, sorry, 4.5% actually preferred doing only extensive listening in class. Imagine that. And surprisingly, or non surprisingly, 0% or none of the participant participating in the study preferred practicing early listening strategies in language classrooms. Well, some of you might think that, well, if you have to choose between doing listening strategies and watching movies in English, you will definitely like choose the latter, but that might not be the case because in terms of the usefulness of listening strategies, be it extensive listening in improving their listening skills. The participants reported that both can improve similar areas of L2 listening ability. As you can see in the table vocabulary, listening fluency, <clears throat> sorry, a listening comprehension will be improved by both approaches. However, and as you can see from the percentages in the table, more participants agreed that extensive listening was more useful. So that come to the conclusion, I would like to demonstrate to teaching practitioners the possible benefits of incorporating extensive listening into their teaching routine. As input is necessary for language acquisition, so authentic, fun, engaging, and comprehensible input should be provided more in language classrooms. In other words, learners should do more extensive listening in class. Listening can be mediated by having additional comprehension aid supplement. In this presentation, I propose using audio visuals with accompanying text as one of extensive listening activities in class. And 
as learners are the ones benefiting the most from learning L2 or our L2 teaching. Their preferences and beliefs should also be taken into consideration. So that comes to the end of my presentation. I would love to uh, extend my gratitude to Assistant Professor Manirat Ekka Yokaya, Assistant Professor of Hasara Shinwano, two lecturers of the Foundational English Instruction Course in which this project first firstly developed. And most importantly, I would love to thank my dissertation advisor, Assistant Professor Pompimon Sukawati. <laughs> she is uh, the person in the picture you see. She tried her best to register for this confer conference uh, to be with me in this presentation, but for some inexplicable reason, she could not register. So um, she is also with me in my heart. And I also would love to thank uh, extensive listening scholars, Dr. Willy Erenanya, for always being supportive of me and of my extensive listening journey. And he is actually the person who encouraged me to do my presentation in this respectable forum. And I would also would love to extend my gratitude to Dr. Ralph Faring for uh, giving me the guidance and tips for designing the survey uh, to see the attitudes of the students on extensive listening. Last but not least, I would like to thank Jala Longkorn University Language Institute, or CULI, for allowing me to administer <coughs> the survey <coughs> on their students. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for your attention. I hope you have a good day. If you have any questions, I would be happy to try my best to answer. Thank you very much, Mink. I'm going to turn off the live streaming right now.